Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Nori to explain here, bring you guys another board to two blue vortex news update. And today we have more in-depth spoilers for the upcoming manga chapter. There's a lot to go over and it will officially be out on the 20th this month, which you can read on Shueisha's Manga Plus app and Viz Media's Shonen Jump app for free. That part's not sponsored. Depending on when we get a fully translated chapter and I can have a buddy of mine double check the translation. The review might be out on the 20th since the editor who normally works on the board to reviews is going to be working on that instead of the Jujutsu Kaisen chapter review on my other channel. So I thank you guys for your patience because he's going to keep that quality going that you've been seeing in the two blue vortex reviews. Like always, I'll go over the parts of the chapter that stand out and for the parts that I'm waiting on more context on, I'll address all that stuff in the review because again, this is a very context heavy chapter. As of me recording this this morning, we only have text leaks right now. So anything that changes after 9 a.m. obviously is not going to be reflected in this video. So jumping right in, we have quite a bit of information in this chapter, which is from the looks of it, again, going to be very lore heavy and exposition heavy. But there is still some action in the chapter, not a lot. But again, a majority is context and lore and flashbacks. The thing that really stands out is that on top of there being a new enemy that's created, yes, a new enemy, Boruto now has the four Shinju to worry about, Code to worry about, Kawaki to worry about, I guess not Kawaki so much, or Code, and a brand new enemy. We also have the reveal that Kashin Koji has awakened new powers, which makes that scene where he fled against Ishiki make way more sense now, and we finally have an answer as to why he did not go after a model right away like Ishiki had theorized back then, which is something that most fans were screaming was a plot hole and that the story forgot it. And the story is once again showing that it's not a plot hole and that fans need to have patience when reading ongoing manga and particularly monthly manga. You eventually get your answers, but manga is not like anime where you can just binge a completed project. So basically, Kashin Koji is he was getting beat down by Ishiki. Ishiki hit him so hard, the guy ended up getting survival instincts kicking in and he awakened his latent power, which is future sight, similar to the Shinjutsu that Boruto used that belongs to Momoshiki where he could see the future back when Boruto and Momoshiki's thoughts are crossing over. With the power Kashin Koji awakened, he basically saw the end of Boruto Naruto Next Generations play out. He saw burial mode Naruto versus Ishiki, which probably came as a huge shock to him given how he saw Naruto struggling to catch his breath against Delta, gasping and wheezing and huffing and puffing from the Taijutsu exchange. And he said that level of power is not going to be enough to defeat someone like Jigen. And he's now watching Naruto tap into a power level that is high enough to take on the same Ishiki that was about to kill Kashin Koji. Very poetic. Our favorite cyborg clone, Kashin Koji, learned what every villain in Naruto's 700 chapters learned which is that even if you're stronger than Naruto, don't push the wrong buttons on that goofy knucklehead because he's gonna make you regret it. If for no other reason than to just be extremely petty about it. Okay, okay, so adding this in post recording because I got more context now. I told you it's a context heavy chapter. So apparently what Kashi and Koji was seeing was an alternate timeline where Ishiki kills Naruto and where Kawaki killed Boruto and Sarda. Sarda changed Boruto's fate. Kawaki was in possession of Kama Seal, kills Boruto and Sarda, and Ishiki won by harvesting a chakra fruit because Code did it. This is crazy. This is context heavy. I'm getting the translations changed. This is too big to not put in this video though. Wow. Now you guys see what I mean when People are like, why are the what ifs so dark? Because Naruto writes stuff with a lot of plot armor where everything goes right. And if the smallest thing changes, you usually get a terrible ending where the villains win. Most what if scenarios do not end in a great way. He also saw Ko get his limiters removed and him having the claw marks, which wow, that's interesting since it does make you go back to that moment where he asked Amato where Ko was exactly and where Delta was before the fight. If it were anyone there except for Amato there with Kashin Koji when that statement was made, I'd have chalked it up to a tactical error slash a oversight. But in hindsight, we know why Amato didn't want Code harm. He knew Code 
was the best person to awaken Kawaki's coma, so later on he was planning on giving him. Sussy Baka points, they're going through the roof right now for Amato. That's gotta be a huge shock to Kashin Koji that not only that Ko reclaimed his lost power, but he was also able to make an army out the Ten Tails. He was also able to see Ada get released from Boro's hideout and her interactions with Kawaki, which led to omnipotence, which means even after everything that happened, Kashin Koji already knew what was about to transpire with Boruto and Kawaki switching lives, which that in itself, that is a very huge reveal. That gives you your answer as to why Boruto and Kashin Koji are working together and why there's no animosity between them. Kashin Koji saw a future where Boruto was needed to stop the god tree from being harvested on the planet, which now makes you look at how weak Kawaki is right now and you either start thinking this man needs a power up, if he doesn't get a power up then we're screwed, or there's going to be a harvest that takes place before either Boruto or Kawaki or Eden, basically a subversion of our expectations, very similar to how Obito started awakening the Ten Tails without having the nine Biju chakra in full. He only had small parts of Naruto's chakra or rather Kurama's chakra via the gold and silver brothers and part of the eight tails chakra from the tentacle that Sasuke ended up getting tricked by. What we're seeing here isn't so much as Kashin Koji is immune so much as he's joined the list of people who knew the truth about what happened. They figured out the truth. Omnipotence is not as hard to grasp as a lot of people in the fandom still make it out to be. Full video explaining how Omnipotence works will be in the description box. Click the show more button and you'll see that video. But in short, people affected by it will more likely than not default to trusting their memories. And the longer that Omnipotence is in effect, the more difficult it becomes to look past any irregularities that are right in front of you. As Sasuke said, and I'm quoting verbatim because I've had to use this panel so much, I can actively feel in my mind each thing drastically bothering me less and less end quote and sarda saying despite everyone sensing something was wrong asking how could kawaki have a modified body that comes from car if he is naruto's son born and raised in the village and how come he doesn't have momoshiki's chakra as more time passes by they just stop questioning it and they believe their memories because that's what omnipotence does people have to put the pieces together for themselves someone laying out the logic alone to them is not gonna be enough we saw that with sarda for three years they have to come to their own conclusions sasuke did this by trusting sarda over his own memories amado did this by trusting the data he saw in kawaki's body that only he could have placed there even if his memory tells him otherwise shikamaru trusted his distrust of Amato as a reason to believe Boruto's words. Kashin Koji having seen everything beforehand is going to be trusting his vision of the future he saw beforehand as well. The other thing that stands out here is that we learn Amato once again was telling half-truths to Naruto and Shikamaru. Even after Naruto told him, hey man stop lying tell me everything, which that is another sign of how Naruto's own naive nature especially as Hokage was used against him. Something that we said back in chapter 75 when that dropped. I believe it was in the review. I said, if I'm not mistaken, I said that Amato was using the classic gaslighter manipulation tactic by telling his sob story of his daughter dying to disarm a very hostile Naruto who just held his son's dead body in his hands a few days prior, was still traumatized by it, just as he gave Naruto the Byakugan suppressant drugs to disarm him. When Shikamaru and Naruto were going, wait, hold on a second, the hell do you mean? Code has a karma seal and his true power goes over Jigen. That was pretty big information we should have known before now. There's a pattern to all of this with Amato, and we're seeing it once again continue, even though he's not even on screen. Amato made it sound like it was only a certain number of his cyborgs that had Shibai's DNA, so Code, Ada, and Damon. It was seemingly limited to that based on what Amato had told us, but in truth, every single car inner member possessed DNA as Shibai, which Jesus Christ, that is huge, that is a huge omission to make, and that's also big for the lore. So allow me to explain what I mean by this. So prior to this, we had the information in the Boruto manga physical manga volumes that basically piggybacked on what we were told when Kodachi was the writer, where Amato's technology was stated to be very similar to what Konoha uses, 
but it's leaps and bounds above that technology in the way that it uses ninja tech. This, of course, was Konoha trying to make the same technology that Amato had developed, but it was being used in a different way via the bionic type ninja tech slash shinobi wear ninja tech, which basically uses Hashirama cells that Tsunade and Kakashi let out to the private sector to use in the hopes of helping people like Mike Guy who can't walk and using that technology Katasuke was able to get very close to what Amato did. He was able to use the Hashirama cells to make a fake chakra pathway system and fake artificial organs. But that was as far as Katasuke was able to go. That's why when he saw the ninja tech that Amato had made, he was blown away by it. It was beyond his comprehension. Until now, we never knew why. But now we know that the binding agent that Amato used for cellular nanotechnology that every cyborg has inside of their body. It wasn't Hashirama cells, but instead it was Shibai cells. And it puts a lot of information together now. That's why Katasuke was not able to fully comprehend the technology it was used. It was alien to him, quite literally. Based on what we see here, it seems as if every car in her got Shibai's DNA, but Kawaki was an exception and that does make sense. Again, Kawaki was a vessel for Ishiki and Ishiki already had Shinjutsu in the form of the Kokugan. So that lines up perfectly with not needing it. It does bring into question though, why Kashin Koji awakened the power of his Shibai cells so late. And I think we can chalk that up to Amato just having another contingency plan, very in character since he originally made people like Ada and Damon in a cyborg stronger than Jigen who could use Shinjutsu right from the start. If you have a delayed awakening, one where you don't even know the awakening date yourself, very similar to how Amato was not able to say with 100% when Kawaki's karma would reactivate. In both of these cases, it looks like it had to be near death or traumatic experiences. It's easier to get one over on someone like Jigen and that's in line with the whole thing of Kawaki had karma and even Amato didn't know when Kawaki would reawaken it. So this is a signature for Amato here. This is a very interesting expansion of the lore. If for no other reason, Hashirama's corpse, it can now rest in peace now. It's been 13 years of Hashirama cells being the source of every major power up in the Naruto world now. Going back to when Naruto's manga was still running 13 years ago, the god of Shinobi was replaced by a literal god. You'll love to see it. That's kind of poetic when you think about it from that perspective. Now, the last couple of things that we have from the leaks that we got here is that there's a new enemy who apparently looks like Gar's son, but as of this recording, the raw panels aren't out yet, so I can't confirm it. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer to edit the video. So if like if someone like Gorto Art or somebody like that colors a panel, I will show it in the video so you guys can see it. But if that does end up being the case, Boruto being outside the land of Wynn in Kashin Koji's hideout, that's starting to make a lot of sense right now. Especially since Kashin Koji and Boruto, that meeting took place when Boruto was an internationally wanted criminal for the death of Naruto Hinata. There might be some heartbreak coming for Shinki fans, all seven of which, and I think one of you are actually in the Patreon Discord server because if I'm not mistaken, a couple days ago when that a special preview came out. I believe one of you guys said, hey, if they're in the land of wind, then maybe Shinky's gonna make an appearance. If you said that and you're in the Discord server, you're a great prognosticator. Obviously, if you're not in the Patreon Discord server and you said that on the uh, channel comment video and everything, hey man, you are still a great prognosticator. Now, we also have the rest of Boruto Uzumaki. Now, apparently, Boruto's injuries are so great he can barely maintain consciousness, and Konohamaru places him in a set of handcuffs that seal his chakra with Jesus. My guy Boruto, he's going through it right now. He comes back. He saves the village twice. Let me let me let me start that over so you can kind of get a real picture painting, right? Picture this stuff if you're Boruto. Like, dude, what the hell? He comes back to a village that wants to kill him. He saves said village twice. He saves his sister saves his sensei's daughter. He gets shot. He's leaking out so much blood. He can barely stay conscious. And now he's being arrested by Konohamaru, which I mean, to be fair, Shikamaru did say like, hey, I can't really help you fam. You know, Konoha is still gonna come after you to kill you. There's only so much I can do in my position. Now, obviously this is a big deal because of the type of handcuffs that are being used. So you probably are gonna have Kashin Koji reverse summon board. So, or something else that happens at the start of the chapter. 
before people start slandering Konohamaru, which that's going to be interesting if, if people are slandering him. I will say this. Keep this in mind. Yes, Boruto used the Rasengan. And a lot of people, such as myself, we all thought that that would be enough to make him realize Boruto is really Naruto's son. But it just goes back to the point that was said earlier. Omnipotence is that busted. I will make the jokes about Konohamaru. I'm pretty sure I just tweeted out uh, a few minutes ago something of Konohamaru getting his ass whooped by Boruto with the rock and a gift breaking hand uh, handcuffs. But here's the thing. Omnipotence is that busted. Over time, it makes you stop questioning the things that you know are wrong that you're seeing and you just accept what your memory is telling you. Basically, it's telling him, don't believe your lying eyes. Believe what you remember, which that is fitting, and this does not get enough credit. If you're a fan of the Naruto series, you should love this. Naruto as a franchise continuously told us, a ninja must see through deception. And most of the shinobi are affected right now, and they can't see past the deception of omnipotence. If Kawaki having Ishiki's chakra and the body of a cyborg, let me repeat that, the body of a cyborg and baby Boruto is in photos being held by Naruto. If that's not enough to make people go, wait on, hold a minute, the Rasengan's not going to do that either. The common thing that we've seen is that when people figure out the truth, they attach the thing that made them question their memories to something else of greater importance to them. For Sasuke, it was his daughter. For Amato, it was his ninja tech and his daughter's data. For Shikamaru, it was his mistrust of Amato, which I guess you could say that also gets linked back to Shikamaru's son as well, just given that Amato bluffed and traumatized Shikamaru, which sounds basically Amato saying like, hey fam, if you don't let me go into Konoha as a citizen, you and Tamara, you better start get on trying to have another baby. I know she's 36, so you better hop on that, fam. Because again, in Naruto Shippuden, Tamari was 20 years old. 16 years later, bored to Naruto Next Generations. Clarifying the timeline, because people, for whatever reason, still think that Tamari and Shikamaru are the same age when they're not. There's a four and a half year gap between them, just like there's a six year gap between Sasuke's father and mother. That's basically what Tamari and Shikamaru did. There's a ton more that happens in this chapter, but it's super context heavy. Like more likely than not, by the time you guys are seeing this, more information likely will have uh, leaked out. I've got the whole chapter in bullet point summary, but I don't have too many scans right now. You know, I'll go back and I'll touch up a few things. If there are any color panels, those will be safe to show. I won't have to worry about Shueisha copyright that way, but like there's not a lot I feel comfortable going into just because this is very packed with information. This review might end up being around 28 minutes long, just looking at what we got. So I don't want to go too much further onto it. If a full translation drops today or tomorrow, the review should be out either on the 19th or the 20th. So keep your notifications turned on and thank you in advance for your patience. I'll still drop the Kashin Koji video tomorrow that I was going to drop today because of the artwork on the thumbnail. It's just too funny to not upload that video. I laughed my ass off when the channel artist sent me that thumbnail. I'm not going to waste that video. In the meantime, click here on the left for my new Chainsman chapter review or click here for this Naruto Explained video that YouTube has suggested that you should check out.